bad. You know that time I was freaking out? I'm still freaking out! But now the heat of war is not so drastically upon my back. I have a moment to collect myself and tell you what's happening. Once the power went out, Team Smoke launched an aerial attack. They filled the arena with poisonous smoke, and I grabbed a mask while me and my pokies did all we could to get people out safely. Once Team Smoke landed, a battle immediately ensued, and they started snagging people's Pokemon. It was a heated battle, and I stared death in the face. And let me tell you, that face looks a lot like El Drago, whose face I saw. I came into this tournament a tiny baby child, and now I am a woman. I think I'm in shock. I need a weighted blanket or Sealy. I just hope the others are okay. We find ourselves back down in the lab beneath the Kanoko Tower. After Shavakadu's Dragon Pulse knocked Il Drago away from Marlin, and he, along with the other members of Team Smoke, retreated up above. Down below, it is still chaos down in the lab. Alarms are still going off, purple vapor still pouring out of vents, and Professor Nichols still at the computer. Mr. 90s and Francis are out and Tyler has just been defeated. The strange crow bat brought back into its Pokeball, and Tyler is in the process of retreating. Who is doing what? I think Luca is going to try and stop Tyler. Okay, Luca's going after Tyler while Lewis is here with Nichols? Yeah, and he, N Lewis is going to try to help Nichols turn everything off and make sure things are safe. Okay. Wow, we're right back in it, folks. <laughs> So, first of all, for Professor Nichols, as he is attempting to turn things off, a countdown has appeared on the screen. Oh, classic. Trying to blow up the joint. Time is taken away. So there is a countdown. There is also the vapor continuing to come out of the vents. Also, you can mass. only assume. Yes, that is correct. Also, you can assume that the radio signal is still being broadcast up above. Okay, yeah, they're trying to turn all those things off. In what order? What's what's priority? What's happening first? I guess radio signal. Radio signal first? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and roll 2d6 plus logic for Professor Nichols. Can he get a helping hand from Lewis? Lewis can attempt to give him a helping hand, sure. You can roll to lend a hand plus logic for Lewis. Oh, wow, he rolled a six. Lewis's logic is three, so that is going to be a nine total, a mixed success, so he will give Professor Nichols an extra one. Professor Nichols also has a three in logic. Okay. So now you actually roll for Professor Nichols. An eight plus three. Yes, plus three, and then plus one more from Lewis oh, lending a hand. Oh, got it. All right, so. So that number, plus three, 12. Yes, 12 total. He very quickly turns off, what was the first one you said? The radio signal. The radio signal, as the countdown continues, he is hacking the mainframe, typing in all of these different key combinations, sorting through files, and he is able to turn off the radio signal with a full success. He does it in a good amount of time. Up above, some of the lights on the Kanoko Tower stop blinking in the way that they were, and now Pokeballs are functional again. Yay! Everybody snag your pokies and hold them close. Meanwhile, Luca with Mr. 90s is in hot pursuit of Tyler, who has now brought out a strange looking swoo bat. Swoo swoo! This one seems to have some sort of strange uh, watery powers to also, it. Also, can Luca just try to like football tackle Tyler? Because I think that's what I would rather do. Just coming straight for them? Yeah. So Tyler's gotten a head start because they booked it pretty quickly once the crowbat went down. So there was this moment of Luca having to figure out, okay, he's the one following. So as he's following them, go ahead and just roll 2d6 plus agility for Luca to see if he can catch yeah. up to them while this radio broadcast business is happening. Eight. Eight. Luca is in the process of catching up, just sprinting behind Tyler, who is doing their best to get up ahead toward the exit rather than waiting for the elevator has gone up some emergency stairs and Luca is following. Cool. Meanwhile, back with Professor Nichols and Lewis, what is he trying to get into now to try to shut Smoke. off? Smoke. Great. Lending a hand. Lewis lending a hand first? Do I roll first for him? Yes, you roll for whoever's lending a hand first. 
seven flat. Seven flat plus Lewis is three. Okay, so a ten total. So that's going to be plus two on top of whatever Nichols gets. Oh, nice, Nichols. It's a 12, folks. A 12. Again, a full success. It's almost as if he knows what's happening in these computers. He's seen these programs and files in some way before. It's like his old protege created them. He's much more at ease. Well, not quite at ease. Still quite stressed, but realizing that he's got to get it together because he choked last time. But with another full success, even though the countdown is continuing and there is less than a minute remaining on the, you guessed it, self-destruct timer. (laughs) We then go back to Luca, who is in pursuit of Tyler. As Mr. 90s is preoccupied trying to just fend off the swoo bat to give Luca a clear shot to football tackle Tyler. Go ahead and uh, this one roll 2d6 plus might. Oh, 11 plus might of Luca? Yes. Oh, negative one, Luca, come on! 10. 10, still a full success. Woo! He's lunging, he's diving, like a swoo bat thriving. At this point, Tyler has made their way up onto the ground level and burst out of the utility staircase, cane in hand, with the swoo bat attempting to follow behind. Luca goes and just boom! Full body tackles Tyler, and they both go to the ground just outside of the Kanoko Tower. Tyler's glasses get knocked off, and the cane falls over to the side as they are both just wrestling on the ground for a moment. Meanwhile, down below, Nichols is, I assume now, trying to keep the lab from blowing up. Yes, yes, that is true. That is correct. All right, Folks. go ahead and... Uh, Hack the mainframe. Let's hope we don't fail this one. Lewis is helping. Oh, Lewis was not very helpful. What do I add to that, Rob? Plus three. Ten. Ten. Well, apparently still pretty helpful because that's a full success, so a plus two. Oh, yeah. We are not stressed about that. That is a 14, folks. A 14. I'm glad I let the adults take over there. (laughs) Fingers flying on the keyboard. (laughs) Professor Nichols, with the help of Lewis, is able to shut off the self-destruct sequence that would destroy the lab along with everything inside. Well, that would have been so terrible if I accidentally killed Luca's dad. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Meanwhile, up top, I need for Luca to roll to tough it out plus personality. Seven. Channel your inner tubus, man. As he is wrestling with Tyler on the ground, trying to detain them, keeping them from getting away. He just pushes down on the shoulders, boom, and he is on top as he's got the hands on the shoulders and Tyler is struggling below. There is a moment where Luca realizes something is amiss. Tyler opens their eyes without the glasses to cover them and they are a sheer piercing blue. Like, Pupils or like no pupils? Like no pupils, just full icy piercing blue. With his mixed success, for the briefest moment, Lucas sees what almost seems like a silhouette around the face of Tyler. Some sort of strange red spiked collar, a blank face except for those eyes, and a wispy tendril coming off the top almost like smoke. And then Luca is in blackness. Whoa. Feels himself falling. Whoa. Back down below. I don't know what any of that meant, guys. But like, I heard it. I don't, I don't know what to do with it. Back down below, what is happening with Professor Nichols and Lewis now that the gas is off, the broadcast is off, the self-destruct sequence has stopped. I think they're going to check in with everybody else. Okay. Because they haven't, they don't know what happened to everybody else yet, right? Right, that is correct. They are they are unaware of whatever yeah, was going on. Yeah, so they're going to check in. Okay. Be like, "Guys, guys, can you hear us? Can you hear us?" They are able to get in touch with like you and Detective Reynolds, Marlin, all all, all the rest of them. Okay. Yes. Cool. So it, they get that idea that that was kind of the last thing. Yeah. Okay. Then I would think Lewis goes to get Luca. Lewis realizing that Luca has not come back down yet with the perpetrator that he went going after. He starts- asks Nichols if he's okay to stay here. Yes. And I feel like Janice is on their way. Yes. As well. Like yes. to come down to the lab too. Yes. Because that would be the closest point. Mm-hmm. Lewis starts making his way up the utility stairs following in the direction that he saw them going. Luca, 
is again still surrounded in blackness. He feels himself falling. What? All is that he happening? can see is streaks of silver and red, and again, two piercing blue eyes as he finds himself engulfed in a nightmare. Does like he feel his body? He feels like he is falling. I'm freaking out, guys. Okay, uh Lewis makes his way up top comes outside at this point I think is probably concerned roll for Lewis to survey environment oh no Lewis eight 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 with an eight you get one from mm. the survey environment list okay wow I wasn't expecting this guys where is he again he just walked up the entrance right yeah he has just made his way up the utility stairs and is searching for wherever Luke has gone I guess, am I headed in the right direction? That seems like the right question to ask if I was a dad in this moment. Okay. Is he heading in the right direction? Yes, he sees the door slightly ajar from the lobby. He rushes out into the street, looking around. Into the street? Out into the city. Not necessarily onto, like, moving traffic, but (laughs) outside. I did not know that Luca made it outside. Yes. As Lewis comes outside, he sees Luca flopped unconscious on the ground and out of the corner of his eye in an alley the remains of a lab coat that seems to be walking into some sort of dark void which then disappears like a whirlpool like a doctor strange opening kinda but darker what okay Lewis picks up Luca uh, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Since he's unconscious on the ground, Lewis goes over there. Hey, Luca, Luca, I need you to wake up. Come on, come on. He just picks him up and kind of jostles him a little bit. Oh, 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 where'd they go? Oh, oh, oh. That, that was Tyler. They're gone, Luca. They're gone. Cut two. Back at the hotel. What you up to, Pearl? I don't want to be at the hotel. That's where we left off with you. So, no, where you are no. at. <laughs> I'm in the arena with all the biggies. <laughs> all the biggies and my pokies. And we're all around. Wait, you're where? I'm in the arena with the biggies. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, on top of the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't think that counted. I thought it was a gym. The gym, hotel. It all's the same thing. Huh? The big, you're on the roof. I'm on the roof. Cool. When this old city starts looking smoky And there are tons of people trying to steal This song doesn't feel right for this moment, Gyarados. <laughs> climb way up <laughs> to the top of the roof. Tell me about it, Gyarados. And all my cares and woes can be found here. Oh, yeah. Sing it with me, Gyarados. You're not like Seely. On Gyarados. the roof, there's horrors and there's smoke. And there we can find a million enemies. Don't you know that this night was horrible? Kick it, Banta. I imagine, like, slowly all of my Pokemon yes. are coming into this formation. Mm-hmm. And now we're just happy to be alive and free. Ah, ah. I saw a lot of things I should not have seen. And by the way, I'm still not a teen. On the roof, there's nightmares aplenty. You know it when. <laughs> it like is this weird celebration of her Pokemon coming back, but also oh my gosh. as the smoke disperses, seeing how awful it was. Oh man, yes, and all of your Pokemon as they come back to varying degrees of success attempt to <laughs> kind of sing along. I will say that specifically, Shavakadu, Mysterio. And Mudslide and Pebble seem to be having some difficulty because they are coughing quite a bit. What's up with your capacity, guys? What's going on? <clears throat> and I, can I make like an investigation on this? Yes, discern traits. You guys, we've been, we've always been singing and walking upstairs. That's what we do for our morning cardio. 
What would I add? Logic. Logic, please. Why are my Pokemon on the knees? Uh, it's a nine? With a nine, rather than one of the normal discern traits, it, it's because this is a, a scientific thing that I had you use this instead of uh, instinct. Fair. But with a nine on discern traits, you can tell that it seems like being exposed to this vapor has done something to these Pokemon. Guys, medic! <coughs> Kinga! <coughs> you back in your Pokeballs. I don't want you to get too tired. <coughs> I put a lot of them. I put all of them in their Pokeballs, but I give them all hugs. You do. You give them all hugs, but they all go back in their Pokeballs. Fonta included. Fonta included. So everybody is Everybody's is back, back in. in their Pokeballs. Okay. Jackie, holy cow, man. <laughs> Jackie, who was unconscious through that whole thing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's actually for the best. Less fear moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> Well, Jackie would have jumped off the roof onto something. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, I'm Pearl. She then waves to uh, all of them. All of them being... The Elite Four! At least the members who were there. So, uh, like I said, technically two of the Elite Four are here right now. As Marlin, the champion, uh, is separate from the Elite Four on that higher pay grade. But... Khan and Persica are up here on the roof with Marlin as you go over in their direction. It's just me and Sully too, right? And Sully, okay. yes. And Sully's here as well. I actually think that at this point, as uh, Shavakadu specifically, you know, kind of waved the fan, dispersed most of this vapor that was up there uh, amongst the haze. At this point, there is a moment you see where Khan and Sully just look at each other and like Khan and Infernape are still ready to go. But then Sully rips off the mask and he just like, you know, when like an old man gets emotional, yeah, like watching an Old Spice commercial. Yes. <laughs> Khan is a living Old Spice commercial. Cool. Got old man muscle, and now right now he's got old man emotions because he was not sure where his daughter was. But as she takes her mask off and just like goes over to him, I think that he does weep a bit because he was concerned about whatever she had gotten mixed up in. Oh, me and Celia would have loved to see that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, while that emotional moment is happening over there, man, uh, you just walk over and introduce yourself to Marlon and Persica. Oh, 1000% yes. Hi, I'm Pearl. She shakes Marlon's hand. I know your brother. And hi, I'm Pearl. She goes over to Persica. Love your work. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you go uh, and introduce yourself to arguably uh, the most powerful power couple in the entire region. Whoa! I did not know they were together. Oh, yeah. They've been married for a super long time. Oh. That's not him just calling her like his aunt because they're friends. That's that's literally Luca's aunt. Oh. <laughs> Pearl actually is just getting that in real time. Oh, oh so the kiss you guys had after the battle, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that uh, that big smoosh that we did, yes. Wow! I mean, it was emotional, so <laughs> I don't blame you. Happy to be alive, happy to be alive. I, uh, so I believe that uh, you must be Pearl. Yeah, that's me! Uh, well, it is. Has Luca told you all about me? I have actually I not gave a, him letters I have to not write people with. Been, uh, too in touch with my nephew as of late. So well, what well, the heck? I hope that I get Christmas to hear from cards or what's going on there? Well, I haven't gotten to speak too much to them uh, recently. He's like vaguely Italian. I'm trying not to go like full Mario. Oh, <laughs> what's he wearing, I'm Jonah? Oh, he's wearing a red and blue like velour jumpsuit. The zipper is like partially undone, big, hairy Italian chest poking oh out of gosh. there. He's got, like, a gold chain on. He's got the hat. Big, just thick mustache. I will say he sounds more Russian right now. And I also Well, the Russian was, was Persica. Oh, that's what I was like. I thought it was Persica talking to me. Got it. Yes. Persica is the one who sounds vaguely Russian, and he's the one who sounds vaguely Italian. Again, I'm still, I'm trying to find him. You'll find I'm him. I'm trying to find We're him. We're giving you grace. It was a big episode last time. You know, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm just not willing to go, whoa, it's me, Marlon. Let <laughs> me tell you now, that would be a mistake and stereotyping. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, maybe you guys should have like a family reunion or something, because that was a near life death, near death experience. So, I mean, priorities, right? Am I right, everybody? Look at, look at that guy. And she points to Khan. <laughs> <laughs> He's realizing it. He's realizing it right now. Khan and Sully are hugging. Also, the Infern Ape and Vigo are hugging. Oh my gosh, that's cute. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you guys pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. But hey, speaking of which, where's your brother? <clears throat> hey, speaking of which, you're pretty tough too. Um... <laughs> and Marlin's like, oh, yeah, where, where is Lewis? And he like goes and gets out his poker gear. He goes off and, excuse me, excuse me. He goes and tries to go get in touch with Lewis. Who's calling? Marlin is attempting to call Lewis. Okay, cool. Um, I like your toga kiss. I have one in the making. Oh, so what? Do you have what? Toga pee, toga tick? I have a toga pee. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I got it when it was an egg. <laughs> you know. Have you ever been on a cruise ship? Yes, I've been on a, a plenty of which cruise ones? ships. Yes. What? What? Which ones? <laughs> Sarah, roll just a flat <laughs> 2d6 to see if Persica has ever been on the SS Clara. Uh, I rolled a flat 7. A flat 7? Oh, it was, uh, it was once, a long time ago. Maybe... Psh- 11, 12 years ago, maybe? Oh, wow. Sounds like you could use a vacation. She slides her card. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could, you know. It's, uh, it's tough work uh, being part of Elite Four. Oh, believe me. I know. It's tough work. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> because, yeah, so I you, know. So it's you are a the, lot of work. You are the one who uh, Luca has told Lewis. And uh, Lu- Lewis has told us a little bit, but we have not gotten to uh, know too much. But you are the one who he's been traveling around with, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could also say... Uh, um, apprenticing. He's been apprenticing me. <laughs> you could also say that. You, you've you been apprenticing say, under him. I'm sorry. What? You've been apprenticing oh, under no, him. Oh no 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 Vice versa. Oh. But you know, I prefer equal terms because that's how cool I am. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect her to be this way, guys. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, she's like she's super. I really want person to get a lightning too, so this is not going well. <laughs> Well, so looking at her, I, I described Marlin and his whole deal. But if you recall, I think that we might have... I don't remember if it was actually mentioned in an episode at one point way back or if it was in the Discord or something when somebody asked about her. But Persica, if anyone is wondering, looks like straight-up biker princess. Oh, I love it. She's got two full tattoo sleeves. She is definitely rocking, like, the pink shirt with the black leather vest over it, those tight black pants. She's got that blonde hair, big voluminous blonde hair, uh, you know, piercings and everything. But she's also uh, very soft-spoken when she's speaking to you and uh, definitely, like, you know, is still not talking to you like, oh, aren't you a cute little baby or anything like that, you know. Also, Pearl takes back that line about the apprentice. And (laughs) she goes, wait, hold on. What just happened? It's hitting me. I'm coming out of shock. (laughs) And she's like, everybody, what just happened? We got a lot of issues happening. Hey, hey, can you read me? Uh, Roger, Mayday, hello. Where's my crew at? (laughs) Detective Reynolds, I think, comes over the comms first. You just hear in your ear him with a, I'm coming up. Hazel and Cha-Cha have Lars in custody, and I'm (gasps) coming up to check in with you all. Lars, she scowls. Lewis says, yeah, no, we're, uh, we're all right here, too. We're, uh, we're at the lab over under the Kanoko Tower, so we're still trying to sort some things out here. Uh, Luca, Luca had a bit of an issue, so I'm what do you you mean? Know, we're just making sure he's all right. What do you mean? I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, hi, Luca. I'm hey, fine, too. Hey, Paul, you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Are you okay? I'm, I'm doing all right. You sound rough. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll <love> back later. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kept everything from blowing up. <laughs> Good job, Nichols. You did the bare minimum. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. He did a big one. Okay. Um, I would like Pearl to run up all the stairs of the stadium to the high point. To the low, oh, to the highest point here mm-hmm. on the roof now, mm-hmm. with the top of the stands. Okay, yeah, sure. And I want to look at the skyline where the casino is. Looking at the skyline across the ribbon uh, to the southwest of, toward the location of the Encore Casino. Go ahead and roll to survey environment. That's a 10, sir. A 10. You may ask two from the survey environment list. What happened here in specific reference to the casino? Okay. And more specifically, like, 
I know an explosion went off, mm -hmm. but where did it go off? Like, could I tell that from how the building has been destroyed? Mm, okay. Like where it specifically went off. Okay, so specifics about the explosion that you can tell from this distance. The can I hear can. the answer and then decide on my second question? Okay, sure, yeah. The major explosion blew up the facade, the front side of the Encore Casino. And you can see now, just looking at it, that at this point there's a massive hole on the front side where it's just busted open. So any security doors or anything like that not operational, not functional. Anybody could just run in and out, loot, do whatever. You also see just as you're looking at it at this point, it appears as though most of local law enforcement was at the casino. Seeing as that kind of popped off first, you know, any kind of local officer Jimmy's and whoever else, yes. right, was dispatched over there before this popped off over here. Okay. And you see, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you because you're looking straight at it. There's most of any sort of uh, police presence vehicles and everything are over there. Uh, there are some down below the gym here, but definitely more over that way. Okay. Uh, but additionally, like, you just see that it looks like there's just, like, the remains of maybe a couple, uh, you know, Team Nasty hooligans, you know, fleeing the scene at this ah, point. Ah, nice. My second question is, was there, like, the purple smoke at that location, too? Mm. From what you can see, from what you can tell, it looks as though at this point, it is sort of become all one with the haze of the city. It is not as concentrated as it was up top earlier in the midst of everything. But at this point, uh, it has been fanned out and sort of is just one with that haze that hangs over the whole city of criminy. I keep on telling you that when I look up at this roof, I get spooked out. There's a lot of problems that... Whoa! Oh, hi, Reynolds. <laughs> hey, Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That was what I was hoping for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we got these things. And she knocks her mask. Bing, bing. Yeah. Oh, hey, you need one. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, and you're just like trying to just shove something on his yeah. face. Uh, what? What is it? What? You got to cover up this stuff. This You can't breathe it in. Oh, all right. <clears throat> and he goes and just covers up his mouth some. I think that, you know, any of the others who are around, like, have it most like a handkerchief or something over there. Because it, it is mostly dispersed. And as yeah. far as the immediate effects of any of it that are being experienced by certain people or Pokemon at this point. Um, like, just having Mask off in this area now, like, you're, you'll be, you're okay. But yes, so it seems like the purple stuff was specifically part of this and not part of whatever was happening oh, at the casino. Great. That was my, the answer to my question. Yeah, but so <laughs> it is, like, at this point, because there was so I much understand. of it, and then it sort of, you know, with the various air... Flying it's attacks and it's you know, breezes and things. It's permeated, but it is not concentrated to the point where it is now still outright dangerous at this point, as far I'm as like you yeah. know. Yeah. Cool. Should we have a group meeting? Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. The dummy? Works for me. Jonah here to say thank you for listening to this episode of Postcards from Pearl. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our awesome partner, Dice Envy. This week, check out their fantastic mystery dice sale. This is your chance to snag some high-quality dice for an awesome price. And if you know exactly which dice you want already, you can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. 
If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Jr. and you want to give us a boost, please go to our page on the Apple Podcast app or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It's a huge help to us and we read every review that comes in. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Jr. and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. If you'd like to give us that support, you can do so at patreon.com slash Podcast. You can find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanyjunior.com. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at Questco Junior. You can also hang out with us in our Quest Company Discord and get all the latest updates on Monster Fight and Pocket Monster Fight. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that is especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag Questco Junior or hashtag Postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Speaking of fan art, we've gotten some more incredible art sent to us since our last episode, and here's a new honorific to go along with it. They get a black belt Kate at Grand and Creation on Twitter for a stunning illustration of the one and only Jackie Cham and all her team punch glory. If you haven't seen that, go check out our Instagram and Twitter where we'll be sharing it, or on the fan art page of the website, or on the Discord where a lot of the fan art gets posted first and you can see it before anyone else. Quest Company Jr. is a proud member of Podicon Go, a group of independent podcasts supporting high-quality content that's fun for the whole family. Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcasts that everyone can enjoy, with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at PodiconGo.com. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the incredible artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Foolboy Media for the song Video Game Land. Thanks to Braxton Burks and Materia Collective for Giratina and the Distortion World, Team Rocket Hideout, Pokemon Mansion, A Tale of Three Beasts, Parts 1 and 2, The Burn Tower, and Trouble at Slowpoke Well. A lot of stuff this week from Braxton Burks. Thank you to Zane for the songs Battle Dusk Noir and Team Galactic HQ. Thank you to Michael and Game Chops for the songs Pokemon League and How Holy City. Thank you to Glitch X City for Silphco Remix and Lugia's song remix. Thank you to Darren Ang for the song Anvil Town. Thank you to Jam Phibius for the song Chillin' with the Bros and Nesk Vartetin for the song Super Mario Blues. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. Also, thank you to our very special guest who makes a cameo at the end of this episode. Who could that be, I wonder? That's all for me, so let's get back to the action. Thank you for joining us here at Quest Company Jr. Here's my question then. I mean, obviously, y'all's crew goes and just takes over to Denny's. There's no one else who's That's not affiliated awesome. with y'all who's into Denny's. That's awesome. I think that if you want, I they've got, <laughs> if you want, they can even like boot out the actual staff and just be like, they all right, do. just coconuts. They do. Coconut is the only chef they do it. allowed. We actually pay the owner of this franchise. You rent the place out. We are renting the entire facility out, groceries included. We all chip in and we kick everybody out. Yeah. This is the new bat cave. <laughs> this is the new hideout. This is what uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned it. This is where Janice was posted up during everything, yeah. monitoring everything, just in a booth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just <laughs> wrapped up in their little moo moo. <laughs> oh, I love it. Monitoring the different devices. I love it. Little, Hi, Janice. Little TV up in the corner. Hey. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> So you all are here. Who do you want in the meeting? Obviously, I Seeley. think that also Seely's back. Yes, Seely's oh, back. Thank God. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Give me the biggest blubbery hug of your life. Oh, da, da, da. Boom. We don't move for the next five minutes. Yeah, just boom, right there. 
full hug in yeah. the booth. Yep. But yeah, so as far as like y'all squad, obviously at this point, there's a, there's a police perimeter set up around the casino. There is also a perimeter being set up around the gym. Lars is in custody. There's a perimeter set up around the tower so that y'all can go back and inspect the lab if you would like. Ooh. So that's where we're at. And then here at the Dedenny's, I would imagine that Hazel and Cha-Cha and probably Janice at this point are all not present. I agree. I think they are probably working the field. Yeah. So they're all on their various duties. I think they're very much leaders as well in dispersing um, lower ranked people in the international police and stuff too. Yes. Well, and also just dealing with like, I think that Hazel and Cha-Cha are probably getting a lot of like statements from people on the roof. They've taken Mm -hmm. care of, you know, getting Lars put away. I think Janice is trying to track, you know. And, and disperse, like, try to get any info of where people are going, where they've went. Mm-hmm. Um, where which people? Like, nasty, team nasty okay. and things, like... So Janice is sort of the liaison to the local law enforcement, exactly. gathering all the information to then bring back to you all. Hazel and cha are dealing with that. Uh, I think that Hazel and cha are also, like, getting a head count and seeing which Pokemon were snagged up Good. on the building, yes. up on the roof. I like that. So they're out, but Marlin, Persica... Khan and Sully all here. Yeah, Nichols, Lewis, Luca. And Reynolds. Yeah. And I assume that is all. Yeah. Great. What would you like to know or ask anyone about as information is just coming back and forth in this big team meeting here at the Dedenny's? Okay, let's get the circle booth in the back. <laughs> all right. All right, Coco, let's pull up another table. Connect it. We're all right. That's right. Keep the syrup flowing. What's Um, who else? What other pokies are like helping do red plates and stuff? I mean, any any of Cuddle Bunch or anybody that you want. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Also, um, Jackie is in another booth icing her eyes and yes. stuff. Yes. <laughs> like, resting and recovering. Yes. Elmer is helping with dishes. Excellent. Oscar's helping with trash. As he is wont to do. By helping with, you mean playing in, um, lounging in, um, being a com- um, uh, compost pile. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tarzan and Fanta are in a booth together, talking about stuff. <laughs> Max is trying to fit in. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Ah, trying. No, I'm just messing with it. I think Pillsbury is loving to run plates. Yes. <laughs> Pillsbury comes back as a different waiter each time or waitress. Yes, I think that's what Pillsbury's doing. Yes. And I think, um, again, I think Omer is doing the dishes, but she really would like to cook. <laughs> she's trying to she's trying to get a little closer. Every now and then there's griddle. a couple extra sprinkles, or dare I say, even a peanut chocolate chip thrown in thrown in some places that shouldn't be. <laughs> Gotta be careful near that griddle, little egg. Oh gosh! <laughs> Dark. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. She's just messing with the batter, Coco. Why, 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 too? I know you're watching out for her. Thank you. Why, why? I know. Love you, too. Give a hug. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Coconut has put a little, like, sous chef hat on, on oh, Elmer. Oh, cute. Yeah, you do the sous dishes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. All right. All right. We're in the booth, everybody. Order! All of the murmuring amongst everyone kind of cools down a little bit. First off, I'd like to say hi. My name's Pearl, in case you haven't met me. <laughs> Hello, Pearl, everyone says. <laughs> All right, cool. Some may say I'm a pretty tough trainer for a uh, <laughs> rookie out there. She tries to flex, but it's not about me. It's not about me. <laughs> I think she really was expecting a compliment from the Elite Four. Mm-hmm. Like, way to go, kid. Or like, tough. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty tough out there, and it's not <laughs> happened yet. So she's kind of like, what the heck do I need to do? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's what's going on in her head, guys. That's I promise. hilarious. But enough about me. Guys, some serious stuff happened tonight. It's not okay. And, and, and I'm angry <laughs> because it was serious, and thank goodness you guys got it, and you came to the fight. But what the heck? Do people just not care? Well, what do, just happened? Do which people? 
How big is the international police? Do we got to donate to raise their salaries? <laughs> ah, I see. I see. All right. Well, that's just too many. That's a, those are too big a questions for the complex nature of society. But, and she slams another like, I don't know. She gets another attention with a cup of OJ or something. But, um, yeah. What happened tonight? Detective, I leave it in your hands. I've opened the floor from you. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> well, all right. So... Uh, basically, what we're aware of is just kind of what we've been able to piece together from everybody who's involved, and we're still getting statements from, uh, you know, some of the Team Nasty members who were detained, as well as, uh, well, from Lars and uh, any others. Angel Mooney and any of his associates are currently missing at this point. Yeah, what the heck? Did Ringo actually follow through? Well, Ringo... Our man on the inside, guys. <laughs> Ringo did as was the plan and as was agreed upon. All right, so he's still cool. I would have liked to see more get up and go. He's still our informant. But at this point, as far as we know, unless oh, they've discovered anything, he's still working with the Moon Riders. Oh, that's what you're telling me. Okay. Um, Sully, what do you got? Because you were in there pretty hardcore there. And uh, you got some scars from that. Yeah, it was... Uh, a long couple of days. All right, um, and Sully just kind of gets up. She's got a big cup of coffee that she's sipping on because it definitely, uh, you can see Sully's age a bit more in this moment. It is, uh, this whole ordeal has definitely, uh, taken a toll on her. Well, all right, um, so I, uh, obviously, I went undercover briefly with this, uh, Team Smoke, as apparently they call themselves. I made contact with Il Drago, and, uh... That's the big guy you tried to fight, and she whispers to Marlin. Tried to? What are you talking about, tried to? I mean, you and I both know. <laughs> uh, that dragon post wasn't too bad. I mean, your, your dragon is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you a little pat on the shoulder. Hey, hey. Another cup of coffee over here. Hey. hey. <laughs> Andiamo. <laughs> Andiamo. Okay, right. sorry, Sully, we're paying attention, I swear. Yeah, she's like, all right, cool, I'll continue then. Um, so, uh, I made contact with Il Drago, uh, managed to, well, uh, as far as I know, he believed me, I was able to convince him that uh, I was uh, hoping to help him to, I mean, and this was really just a shot in the dark, but uh, take down the league that I, you know, I, I, I spun him a yarn, basically, yeah. but... Uh, you did what you had you know, Ingratiated myself and said that I wanted in on whatever he had going on, that I'd heard from uh, Ringo while Ringo was our captive. I saw Ringo briefly. Uh, had to kind of worm my way out of that one because Mooney was also around, but we got it all sorted. So I was supposed to go up there with them, try to snag the Radiant Stone from you, actually, Pearl. Oh. Yeah, they still want it. Mooney's people still want it, or El Drago wants it still? Drago wants it. Why do you think he wants it so bad? Well, I'd have to imagine it's part of what they're working on. Speaking of which, I'm glad that you all uh, found my note and made your way down to the lab. Thank you. Which, at this point, the first thing that she did whenever you all got reconvened to and got to the Denny's, she saw Lewis and Luke and them, is got back the rest of her Pokeballs that Love were it. being held hostage. That makes sense. Thank goodness that you all were able to get down there and get my Pokemon. Otherwise, we would have had to kept up that charade even longer, which I didn't want to do, but it was what was going to have to be done. But I didn't get the details of what they want the Radiant Stone for, but I was supposed to get it at all costs. So, again, thank you. But whatever they're working on, uh, it's something to do with fossil Pokemon. Uh, at least that's where they started. Their work on attempting to resurrect these fossils led them to, to uh, the discovery of this, uh, well, this stuff that they call Variant Vapor, which is the purple stuff that was floating around up there. Glad you all were able to uh, get some masks among yourselves. What does it do to people if you breathe it in? They're not sure, but they were willing to find out. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> but the uh, Variant Vapor is, well, the reason that the Pokemon that we had were uh, different, uh... The Pokemon that they came in on and, uh, well, you see how Vigo is now. <gasps> Hold on. And she pulls out Mysterio. Flip a coin. I know that this guy has been coughing. Heads. Heads. What has changed about <gasps> Mysterio's luchador costume? Oh no. no. 
now that instead of fighting and flying, <gasps> he is fighting and psychic type. Oh my gosh, that's kind of cool. But I do miss him. Oh my gosh, no. Um, I think what's changed is uh, anything that was green is now purple. Okay. Like the smoke. Yes. What about his physicality? Is there anything different? Probably something with the wings, I would imagine. He still has like his wing attack and everything, and they are certainly still wings, but what about them has changed now that he well, is- I was uh, gonna say something kind of weird, um, and you can tell me if it's just, I also need to add to the wings, but the wings are like, they have smoke coming off of them. Yes. Yeah, but then also like the shape of his eye is now flipped. Ooh. Like it's a, it's a teardrop shape, and so now the the bigger part of the teardrop, like the mask, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, Mysterio! And she gives him a big hug. Is he still happy? He's is, happy. Is he like a friendly guy? Still? He's still friendly. Yes. Okay. This is not a a shadow process. Okay. The, the same way that that happened. She gives him a hug. But... I have to send you to the doctors right away. I imagine there is a uh, thing at the Degenies. <laughs> a PC it's at the Degenies. It's a big city. Yeah. If not, we dragged it here. <laughs> so I could get Steely. Uh-huh. Um, and then I pull out. I go, guys, 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 no! And then I pull out Mudslide and Pebble. What has changed about <gasps> Mudslide and Pebble? No! Now that instead of normal, <laughs> they are poison and fighting. No! I think that Mudslide represents more of the fighting and Pebble represents more of the poison. I agree. I think Pebble has totally changed. Mm-hmm. Demeanor and everything. Yeah. Like she's like Pebble. I don't know if we ever decided it, boy, girl, or they, them, but Pebble is rocking. I think Pebble's purple for one. Yeah. Yeah. Pebble is not a periwinkle anymore. Like it's a, it's a poisonous pur- purple, yep. like the smoke. Mm-hmm. And um, like she's got sharper teeth. Okay. And just not as sweet. There's, There's a, little a little more spice to yeah. it, a little more kick now. Like, you know, Pebble, you could always feel like you could give it a little hug. Mm-hmm. But, like, if I try to climb into that pouch, probably not welcome. You would be. I you would, would be? be. Okay, I wa- it's not I wa- that much. I okay, want to okay. be clear that your Pokemon are not hostile okay, to you as I a result it. of this. I want to change it then. Okay, Pebble is now that that purple of the smoke Mm -hmm. and has like really nerdy glasses. Mm, Okay. Like the vision got worse. (laughs) Like Tina's vision got worse. She's got big Tina glasses. Yeah, she's got big Tina glasses now. That's better. That's a better change. Great. Okay. And not the teeth or anything, but yeah, she's uh, just a different color and has big Tina glasses now. Okay. And what is more fighting centric about mudslide oh, at this point. Oh, man. I don't know, but I feel. You know how, like, on her body, she's got, like, the bits that kind of look like they're, like, jutting Chunky. out, like, almost yeah. like pieces of, like, some kind of armor or anything? I feel like it's something with that. Like, maybe those are just more pronounced now. Yeah, and I think um, the top of her head that looked like a helmet mm-hmm. definitely has ridges. Yeah. And I don't, I think they're not I think the pronounced parts are not so rectangular mm-hmm. anymore. Like they're very harsh, like corners in the original uh, uh, version. Uh huh. But like now they're smoother, round humps. Yeah. So that is what Mudslide of Pebble ooh, look like ooh. now. And her um her her claws, like the t- at the very very tips. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, a little essence of smoke is coming out. Ooh. Smoking. Like a, that's the poison. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit of that poison. Oh, guys, guys, I'm so sorry. And she gives him a hug. Uh, I'll brush my teeth tonight, I swear. And she sends him to the uh to the PC. Great. All right, do. last one. Let's see what happened. Do you want to see any of Lucas before you get to your last one? Lucas had what? Yep. No. Jonah, why did you let me do it? No, Jonah! Why did you let me use Two Fizz? That's who he would have used. He didn't have any way to know. No! I'm actually so sad right now. It's okay. I want Two Fizz to be the last one so we can mourn. <laughs> Two Fizz and Mr. 90s both. Oh my gosh. I had no idea. Jonah, that's like your favorite Pokemon in this whole freaking thing. <laughs> Why would you let me do that? 
You didn't know? There was no way to know. Oh my gosh. I just thought it would only be the people on the roof, too. Well, when they released the gas into the lab. I'm so emotional right now. Okay, Pearl starts freaking out even more after Mudslide and Pebble, and she goes, no, no, no! And she runs outside and throws gear deuce. And you can just imagine Pearl, like, um, hopping and yelling, no! outside, but in front of the Dedenny's, they just see the freak out of yes. her just like this tiny girl next to her Gyarados bouncing up and down. Mm -hmm. Say like, look at this! Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> She'll walk and do, no, I took it for granted! And, and then inside the Dedenny's. <laughs> hopping up and down. They're all just refilling their coffee. Yes. <laughs> But you go outside and, and let Shavakadu out, though? Yeah. When you release Shavakadu from the Pokeball, Shavakadu is a lot longer than when you saw him last. No, he's like a snake. He has to be a dragon. I can fly it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Coco. I'll have some more sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. I think that Luca probably is out there with you Yeah, I think point. so, too. Uh, but while the others are, I think, talking about this and having to yeah, sort yeah. all this out. Um, while Pearl flips <laughs> out. Um, she bangs the glass. Are you seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> Shavakadu has some of his scales blended in with, like, the blue parts have a bit of a green to them now. Ooh. He's got this longer body that sort of just tangles around itself and, you know, just continues to just glide around as he floats in the air. He actually has more of a snout now, like this draconic sort of snout uh, with the mustache even longer now and those side fins flowing. And he also has two arms now. Pearl flips out. Listeners, dishonor if, on you, dishonor, uh, and, and that's what it says to me. It can now speak. It also can speak. Dishonor on your cow. <laughs> Listeners, if you can imagine a Gyarados sort of combined with Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. Wow. That's kind of the vibe that we're getting as Shavakadu is now water and dragon. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> No, I mean, I, as a player, I'm not upset. Uh, as a pearl, I am. <laughs> she tries to give it a hug, but then she gets creeped out by the arms. <laughs> they are, in comparison to the rest of the body, you know, they're not huge arms, but they're certainly usable. Okay, so then she just tries to slap the tail and say, I'm sorry, man. Go uh, see the professors and look at yourself in the water. Sing a song about your reflection. Shavakadu singing reflection. L O L. Everyone imagine that now. Look at me. I'm not the Gyarados that I used to be. And I can't remember my multiplication tables. Who is that dragon I see staring straight back at me? When will my reflection show? The scaly heart I know. Everyone, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then um, Celia is just playing the violin in the back. <laughs> she is. She it's absolutely is. It's one of those is. cello renditions. Yes. It's Celia playing the cello. Oh my it's, gosh. Um, uh, who would be playing the violin? It's Celia playing the cello and the violin at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be Fanta. Fanta's got the flute. Yes. Oh, Darla's just like telekinetically just got, got the violin yes. floating in front of her while it's playing itself. <laughs> That's funny. Who is this Shavaka do now? Will I ever eat an avocado? <laughs> when will my... Ah, uh, yes, Gyarados! Oh my gosh. And then Luca lets his Pokemon out of <gasps> their Pokeballs. Luca! Not you too. I, I don't understand. I thought it was just on the roof. No, uh, when uh, when we were down in the lab, they pulled some kind of switch or something that let some of the that same, I guess, what they call variant vapor, that let it out amongst us. Thankfully, you know, we got some gas masks for ourselves. But I mean, we didn't know what it did, so I wouldn't have thought to put it on my Pokemon. I, I mean, and then she looks, and what do they look like? Mister Nineties, now a steel and fire type. Wow. That big poofy tail 
is now blue flame. Wow. His body has changed in such a way that the chest and shoulder region is is more broad. His face and the way his ears and everything work kind of swoop up on the sides now, and he has, like, just more more muscle, it seems, to him, as well as just, like, the sleekness of his fur. But additionally, he's still got his signature jazz, you know, zigzag on his torso, but also in addition to that, there's some more uh, of these blue stripes and everything. And instead of his normal just claws that are always out now, his paws have come out to be more just, you know, kind of regular paws, almost actually anthropomorphic in the sense that, like, they, they've gotten a little longer, almost like kind of stubby fingers and everything. Wow. And then Ooh. the red claws come out of them. It's very 90s Wolverine. <laughs> cool. And what is it now? It's it's fire and... So instead of normal, he is now steel fire. Wow. Pearl says. <laughs> Whoa. And Toofus. We turn. Who comes out of the lure ball. Still looks largely like himself, but there is even more of a primal, prehistoric quality to him. As he's out here, still a croconaw, his body and limbs have gotten a, a bit longer and even more just like jagged, muscular, scaly already. His snout even has gotten longer, even more teeth lining his terrible mouth. But Tufus, we've always said he was a dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah. But now he is a water and dragon Whoa. dual type. Go join your brother Shavaka dude. <laughs> <laughs> Singing that song in the lake. <laughs> so that's what has happened to the members of y'all's teams. Pearl, uh, I imagine Luca puts him back. Yeah. And Pearl puts a hand on Luca's shoulder. Yeah. I mean, at least you're okay, right? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. She stops uh, it and gives a big hug. Yeah. And you do. You just give Luca a big old hug. Yeah. Mm. And we take a second to compose ourselves before we go back into the adult conversation. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't think at this point they, they, they let go. <laughs> yeah. I have that attention, but yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, y'all make your way back inside. Yeah, you're going to get a big bruise on your forehead. <laughs> Do you um, want some meat like Jackie? And Jackie like hands over some frozen peas. <laughs> to who? To Luca. Oh yeah. But as you all go back inside, uh, would you like the bullet points of what was covered while you were yes. out? Yes. Great. So as you go back inside, basically Sully has relayed to the crew that Team Smokes work on attempting to resurrect various fossils, led them to the discovery of this variant vapor their attempts to specifically resurrect Mew with a fossil Ah, stolen. there it is! From the lab of Professor Daniel Nichols. The most classic of all classics. (laughs) I feel honored. Honestly, I feel honored. This is is now in my realm. I can't believe it, folks. (laughs) That their attempts uh, to resurrect Mew from that stolen fossil have up to this point not been successful but did lead to the creation of more ditto here around the city as they were a uh, unforeseen byproduct of the experiments. That's and so cool. That is uh, definitely a new development because up to this point before them doing that, no one was really aware of like where ditto came from. Ditto have always been around as far as anybody knows, but where exactly they came from, don't know. Nobody has ever really like See, like nobody's hatched a ditto from an egg. They don't know where they come from. So the fact that whatever, as a result of this process, more of those have popped up is strange. I'm sure like Professor Nichols is fascinated. Yes. Pillsbury is one of those. Would you like my coffee, hun? Thanks. (laughs) But the meat of it, and I think that this is what they're in when you come in, is that Team Smoke was working together with Team Nasty to do both of their big events at the same time. Sully was told that Team Smoke was to snag a bunch of powerful Pokemon at this tournament 
in exchange for fossil Pokemon that had come into the possession of Team Nasty that were not artificially resurrected. Oh, no. She says, yeah, so uh, uh, apparently they had a, an Archeops and an Aerodactyl that they'd gotten their hands on somehow. Uh, Wait, how? I don't know. Didn't get that far. She I just know that looks at it, Luca. Yeah, Luca is wide-eyed as well. They weren't our fossils, were they, Luca? No, I mean, our fossils are still right here, but the ones that we I fought that flew off. I my fossil out. Yeah, both of y'all still I'm have innocent. your fossils. I'm innocent, I swear. <laughs> All right, don't start to pin this one on me. She points at Defect. <laughs> I'm not, not planning on it. Not right, planning on it, cool, Pearl. Cool. I tried to warn the people. But Pretty, no, I and mean, she looks at Priska again. Pretty tough. You're like, I just want to impress this adult. I know. She really, I really thought I would have impressed those adults. Not a single peep. Dang. Marlon just complimented your Dragon Pulse before you had your whole all right, new all right, Pokemon I got breakdown. One. I got one out of three. That person could just say, not too bad, not too bad. But did she mean it? Ah. Did I deserve <laughs> it? They didn't seem as though they were in a hugely compliment-heavy mood after, you know, they were still trying to sort out all of everything. They're those type of people to begin with. Oh, my gosh. I'm not on the Elite Four level. Oh, my gosh. They're just like, thank goodness this kid didn't die on the roof. (laughs) Okay. But, no, I mean, the ones that we fought, though, I mean, there's no way that those would have been, like, the the Team Smoke would have brought them back, so. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, what do you mean? What, What did you, the two of you... Fought a, a what now? An Archaeops and Aerodactyl? Like like Sully's talking about? What are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, we fought him on this uh, mountain called, like, Feather Rock with our friend, um, Ika. Wait, but I, I'm i sorry. These were these were fossil Pokemon that were out in the wild. Yes, wait, hold on. Uh, th- this is Professor Nichols now. Hold on. Hi. Wait, so now, Pearl, you fought two fossil Pokemon that out in the wild. Sir, uh, start again and acknowledge my partner in crime, Luca. No, uh, I was, you collectively, the two of you, along yeah, with your, your friend. That's more like it. That's more like it. We're a team. That's right. We don't go solo. We socialize. Yeah. We look at other people in the eyes and we talk to them. That's right. So, so the <laughs> She two- says secret burn to Nichols. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay. The sorry. two of you. Yes. How did you... These these aren't Pokemon that are around anymore, Pearl. That's why I'm just sort of confused as to how you would have encountered them out on just just on a mountain. What what I, I don't well, it was I don't a quite understand. Mountain, right, Luca. Well, I um, mean, I, I wasn't really the mountain. I was the Rainbow Wing. Yeah, the Rainbow Wing, because that's what we were going up to get. Right, but no. So wait, but no. we got it. No, it's yeah, on, we got it, and Ika has it. But yeah, it's on Ika's pit of sky. Wait, I'm. You ever heard of this cool lady named Gloria? Uh, I'm Let just... me give you a history lesson here, Nichols. Back a long time ago. Uh, with also, a natural I... 11, Professor Nichols is very aware of who okay, Gloria is. Okay, I tell the story and I also filter some things in. She also invented the chocolate chip cookie. She then got to meet a star baby. And that star baby said he would love her till the end of time. And one day they would be together in star heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and that star I have met. Uh, uh, Thus concludes my presentation on Gloria. Thank you, Celie. You may fold the trifold back up. Order, 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 order. Okay. So your your friend Ika. Ika took you to this feather rock and you all found a rainbow wing. Yeah. And up there with the rainbow wing were two living fossil Pokemon. Yeah. Do you see where I'm going here? Well, I'm thinking you think that the Rainbow Ring might have something to do with it, but if so, then what's Sky up to? Because I bet Sky is just able to fly now. I, I, which is not a big... Hold on, hold on. Let me call her up. <laughs> bring, 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 bring. You call Ika? Yeah, 1,000%. <laughs> Hi, Aika. It's Pearl. I know we're probably missing you on a timing thing. You're probably just having breakfast. It's like midnight over here. That's always the case with us. Uh, right. Uh, hey, Pearl. Uh, no, it's actually nighttime here, too. We're in the same region as you, so there's not a big time change or anything. Wait, you're in the same region? Yeah, we're doing the air show. Oh, yeah. Good times. <laughs> yeah, so wait, I'm sorry. What's, what's going on? Are you are you all right? Quick question. Uh, yeah, shoot. Uh, how's Sky? Sky's doing great. 
she's actually evolved since you last saw her. She's tranquil now, so we've been working really hard. Cool. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Okay, anything unusual about Sky? Any kind of pokies attracted to Sky, like prehistoric pokies? Well, no prehistoric pokies. Why? Are you thinking about that Aerodactyl and Archaeops from up on Feather Rock again? Yes, 100%. That's what I'm thinking about, Aika. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You hit the nail on the head there, Aika. Um, seems like there might be some issues with prehistoric pokies coming around again. And it's supposedly those were super rare. So I got a, I got a pokeapologist over here thinking that that rainbow wing was causing something. Well, as far as I've noticed, I mean, there's no prehistoric Pokemon just following us around or anything. Uh, but we've been going around and doing the air show. And I mean, certainly wherever Sky goes, life uh, tends to follow. <laughs> What does that mean? Well, you know, the flowers bloom a little brighter and the trees' leaves are greener. The wild Pokemon seem happier, rejuvenated. Certainly. Wherever we're around, anyone else as part of the air show, their spirits seem lifted. She just, you know, brings life. Huh. Whatever you do, don't let anything happen to Sky. I won't. I would never. That's perfect. It's in good hands, Professor Nichols. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay, Aika, I'll talk to you later. All right, I'll talk to you soon, Pearl. I hope to see you sometime soon. Sounds good! Come see the air show. Oh, we will! Sky Cafe! Sky Cafe forever. <laughs> Click. Yeah, I think it's fine, Nichols. No, but what I'm... You heard it. I mean, I put it on speaker. No, I... I... Thanks for being chill, everybody. Everyone with the group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, but Pearl, what I'm saying is, if these Pokemon... I can only assume they're the same ones that you all fought on top of Feather Rock. Because I don't know how on earth there would be any others around. But if those are the same ones that you fought, then that means that what brought them back to life had to have been the Rainbow Wing. Totally. The Rainbow Wing comes from Ho-Oh. You know, you know this, right? From the, from the legendary Pokemon Ho-Oh. Maybe... The, the Phoenix Pokemon. Big rainbow feathers flies through the sky. <gasps> yes, I do. It was in the very I've first intro this. of the podcast okay, ever. yeah, yeah. The rainbow wing. The Ho-Oh has been known to, to bring things back to life from being deceased. Uh-huh. That is actually the legend of how the legendary dog Suicune Entei Raikou came to be, was that they were Pokemon who had perished in a fire, were resurrected by Ho-Oh. So if... This rainbow wing, if this rainbow wing can bring fossil Pokemon back to life, that probably explains why Team oh. Smoke is interested in these. If their previous attempts at reviving these fossil Pokemon, well, obviously some have been successful because, ah, the gyms, my brain. Wait, wait, we've been seeing fossil Pokemon at the gym. Yeah. Oh, my brain. <laughs> Luca. My brain. <laughs> Detective Reynolds. Yes, we yes, We need Pearl. somebody from the International Police ASAP at that air show. If, 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 if they got the hands of the Rainbow Wing, they, and she gets real low, they could bring Mew back to life. All right, um. Oh, and Sully, Sully, get out of here. I love you, but go protect my friends. <laughs> Luca, we're going. We're going. I got the hug ready. Uh, well, well, what, 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 hold on, wait, we gotta, we gotta just sort this out. We gotta we sort need... this out, okay? Okay, okay. We don't okay. know that Ike is in any kind of like immediate danger. Yeah, and but, we don't, oh, we but also it's only don't a matter know. of time. Well, they don't, they might not know how the Pokemon came back because they don't know about the Rainbow Wing. That's true. We're the, we, we, the we are the only people who know about the Rainbow Wing. She looks everybody Ica. in the eyes. Sworn to secrecy. Everybody, yes, 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 yes. All of the NPCs say yes. I'll send the biggest, biggest dinosaur I know after you will. <laughs> if you break my dress. <laughs> so they, as far as we know, there's nobody else who should have any idea how the Archaeops and the Aerodactyl came back to life. If Team Nasty just found them, right? But then how are no they There's no way bringing, that they would know. Wait, but then how are they bringing, like, the Pokemon, like, the gym Pokemon back? Well, because that's what doesn't make sense to me. Are they just trying to do it like how they're trying to make the Mew, f Mew fossil? Mew, meow, meow fossil? Mew. 
Mew, thanks. Um, that was an honest, serious moment, moment there, guys. But the Mew fossil back to life. They're trying to do that. So are all the gym pokies like prototypes or uh, test tries? Because they don't, if they don't know the rainbow ring, then how are they getting them? I think it's practice. Yeah. Okay. That's what I think too. Some say that Mew is where all other Pokemon, you know, stem from. That it is the the source. You know, after Arceus, boom, everything creation. That Mew is sort of like with Pokemon on Earth, where they all stem out from. Everybody's got a Papa and a Mama. It's called Mew. So the mamas and the papas. Can we just imagine all of their albums really quick, but with <laughs> yes, you? Yes, just all of, them, <laughs> all of all of the album covers, but with Mew's face. Oh my gosh, that's funny. So it's not surprising that if any one of these was going to give them trouble, it would be Mew. So with that said, yes, I I, I would have to say that the, the other the other fossil Pokemon that we have seen up to this point have been practice of some sort. Does and that I mean think that, uh, oh, what I'm sorry, Pearl, what? No, you go. I, I was just saying. You're like and, in a scientific conclusion. You and gotta. I think that there may be something down in the Kanoko Tower that they're using to do it. There was a machine. Uh, we, we left in a hurry to meet back with you all. But since the lab is still there, we, we could go take a look and see. You definitely should. Yes. And then she looks at the Elite Four. Yeah, you look at Marlin and Persica and Khan. I would like to make an insight check on them. Okay, go ahead and uh, roll perceive motive. What do I add? Personality? It is instinct. Eight. Eight. What one question would you like to ask from the perceive motive list? What are they hiding? Mm. Khan has no idea what most of anything that's being said means. Beautiful. <laughs> but he is nodding intently. Persica, I think, is trying to... Just be cool about the fact that she is honestly shocked that that her nephew and her nephew's friend have become wrapped up in something like this and are here and talking about it. Okay. Uh, and grateful, but shocked. Okay. Marlon is just surprised that his little brother actually called him in for something this important. Okay. He did not think that... Uh, his brother had it in him? Yes, he, he underestimated the situation, and he's kind of just taking this in at this point. Sounds about right. Team underdogs over here. <laughs> Tell me the story of my life. <laughs> okay, um, with that in mind, then I want to look at them very seriously. Did you even know any of these things were happening in the gyms? Because do they have any power or control over the gyms? They are certainly in a position where, like, they're not the ones directly hiring gym leaders. Uh, you know, there's like committee for that and everything. Like they're they're not the ones who are doing the hirings and, and all of that kind of stuff. Under most circumstances, the champion has the kind of jurisdiction to move things around if need be. But Marlin has not really exercised that. He hasn't had any specific appointments that he has done or anything like that. All right. Um, so they're not entirely in charge of the situation, but they do have some level of power. Yes, they certainly do as, you know, definite figureheads being some of the most you know powerful trainers in the region. And, you know, just from a sort of publicity side of things, like they are some of the most influential around uh, and have the power to kind of get things done should they so choose to start moving on Great. something that is like important to them. Cool. Then Pearl definitely looks them in the eyes and says, did you even know any of this was happening in the gyms? No. no Thank you, Khan, uh, for your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could not say that I have, no. I uh, I was not aware. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's surprising. I did not know. I was not aware of the situation that was going on. No. As far as I knew, I knew about Sam. I knew about Lewis's ex-wife going off, running off, and joining this a Team Nasty. I knew about that. I did not know about any of this. Um, okay, Pearl looks down, um, but I think someone picks up the conversation next. Yeah, the conversation picks back up, and the adults start talking amongst themselves once more. Uh, specifically, I think that um, the Elite Four members are going to hang around a little bit if they are still needed. Lewis and Professor Nichols are starting to talk with you and Luca about going and checking out the lab again to see if they can find out anything more about this fossil situation and about the variant vapor, especially since y'all's Pokemon have been affected. But then Janice comes in and comes and speaks with Detective Reynolds for a moment, uh, hands over some files and everything, and uh, Detective Reynolds says, all right, all right, so look, um, 
we've just uh, we've got an update. We've got numbers. Uh, looks like nine Pokemon were snagged up on the rooftop. Let's see, there was a Hitmonlee, a Mineshow, <gasps> a Semipore, no. an Azumarill, no. Metacham, no. a Lopunny, no. a Passimian, no. a Wobbuffet, no. and a Crawdont. So, um, so that's what we got, and we're going to track them down. We're going to find these Pokemon, and we're going to get them back to their trainers. That's right. Pearl slams on the table. <clears throat> and uh, we've also got some more information here uh, regarding uh, just items stolen from the Encore Casino. Uh, so it looks like they made off with a lot of, uh, let's see, uh, honestly, a lot of cash and prizes uh, over at the game corner there. So we've got a bunch of TMs missing. Uh, various uh, held and consumable items, uh, prize Pokemon, and oh, well, it says here, Team Nasty stole a, a silver wing, and that is where we're going to end this episode. Whoa. Daniel here from the Happy Go Lucky Podcast. The show you've just been listening to is part of the new and upcoming Podicon Go Podcasting Network. What is Podicon Go, you ask? We're a group of independent creators that are committed to creating, distributing, and supporting content that is clean, fun, and appropriate for all ages. Thank you for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe and show your love for this show with a five star review. Every time you do, you're helping to support family friendly content for everyone to enjoy. Postcards from Pearl is a fan-made podcast and is not affiliated with Nintendo, Game Freak, or the Pokemon Company.